Independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is challenging Donald Trump to debate him in response to Trump dismissing RFK Jr. as unhinged and a Democrat plant. Here's RFK Jr. attending a rally in Long Island, New York on Sunday. Let's watch. And I look at the poll that Fox released this week, and I'm leading President Trump and President Biden in terms of favorability. He also had this to say. So then why am I behind? The reason I'm behind is in the voting polls, the conventional voting polls, is because so many Americans are voting out of fear. And if you, you know, I, I have yet to talk to anybody outside of my family <laughs> who, who says we're voting for President Biden because he's energetic and because <laughs> He's got, he's got the cognitive capacity to outsmart everybody in the world. And he's going to give us a new vision for America. They never say that, except, again, except some of my family members who, who do believe that. All right, it's clear that RFK Jr. is getting under Donald Trump's skin. The GOP candidate attacked RFK Jr. on Friday, posting on Truth Social, quote, RFK Jr. is a Democrat plant, a radical left liberal who's been put in place in order to help crooked Joe Biden. He also added that a vote for, the, for RFK Jr. is a wasted vote. RFK Jr. responded to Trump's criticism yesterday, characterizing it as, quote, unhinged. He said, quote, when frightened men take to social media, they risk descending into vitriol, which makes them sound unhinged. President Trump's rant against me is a barely coherent barrage of wild and inaccurate claims that should best be resolved in the American tradition of presidential debate. Now, Trump's tenor follows a recent New York Times Siena College poll showing support for RFK Jr. comes at Trump's expense more so than it does at Biden's. Mm. All right, I got to give credit where credit's due. RFK Jr.'s burn about the only people who think that Biden that was funny. excited about Joe Biden are my own family members. The, the Kennedy clan has very notably come out on several occasions now to say that they disavow uh, their relative RFK Jr.'s campaign and that they support Joe Biden full thoroughly. What did you make of the rest Being of that? able to kind of make fun of yourself <laughs> is an underrated quality <laughs> yes. in politicians are so sociopathic and so narcissistic and so <laughs> ego driven. Driven, that um, I really actually appreciated that. Yeah, um, like, can you imagine celebrity. Trump making fun of himself? Well, no. I mean, Trump. Trump is huge. You imagine for making other fun reasons. of everyone else on Earth, but uh, <laughs> right. So I mean, he thinks he's like the most talented Olympic swimmer on the planet, probably. <laughs> well, this is part and I and, our, and you know Biden doesn't maybe even know what time it is anymore. So this is part of what's so interesting is that for years now the argument has been nobody knows how to really parry with Trump. Nobody knows how to go head to head with him and come out on top. Is this evidence that perhaps mm -hmm. RFK Jr. is the 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 uh, uh, pugilist we've been looking for that can actually stand toe to toe with Donald Trump and not seem kind of weak and ineffectual? Yeah, I think it would be to the American people's tremendous benefit to have a debate between all three of these figures. Um, like ostensibly, we're supposed to get a, a Trump-Biden debate. RFK Jr.'s poll numbers should have him on that stage as well if they hold. I think that would be tremendously beneficial. And I think it would be quite a contrast. I mean, you know, RFK Jr. is, is the is the spring chicken, the, the young man in the, uh, in the contest uh, because of the advanced age of our other candidates. And I think it would be really great to be able to hear from all of them. You know, Trump, I, I do perceive that Trump Team Trump is getting more worried about RFK Jr. drawing their voters away now than the Biden people. Obviously, the Biden people are concerned about that as well. And I, and I think the truth is obviously that he is taking some voters from both sides and then also taking from voters who, frankly, would not vote for either of those two candidates. This is generally what the third party candidate does. People who are actually interested in looking outside the two-party paradigm um, might not have come home to either Biden or Trump. Sure, there will be some of them. But uh, the, the panic, the, the panic over RFK Jr. on both sides is very interesting and very instructive, and I think shows you how the major party candidates feel that they are owed your vote and that they don't have to work especially hard to get it. They feel betrayed when you, you're not reflexively supporting the, the person with a D or an R next to the name, independent of whatever their platform is or whatever their vision is or whatever they're doing. They absolutely think it's owed to them, and they want to do things like 
maybe you know do give extra scrutiny from for all those ballot um, signatures he's collecting to actually appear in the states. Let's make sure we deploy the full resources of our legal teams against him, as Joe Biden's yeah, team that's is certainly right. doing. Now, on the question of a debate, I want to keep reading from that RFK Jr. quote because I think he tees up a lot of issues that really demonstrate why it's so important for the American public to get the debate. Substantive issues that, frankly, Donald Trump has not been squarely pressed on because he largely does more friendly conservative press interviews or uh, liberal interviews where people are so kind of bad faith and overly focused on these democracy points, they don't ask him about the agenda items that his own base actually care about. Um, so this is what RFK Jr. went on to say. He said, President Trump, who has proven himself the most adept debater in modern American political history, should not be panicked to meet me on that stage. He's like, hey, you're actually good at this. Don't be scared. He goes on to say, to preview my arguments, I will show how President Trump betrayed the hopes of his most sincere followers. He promised to end the Ukraine war and then colluded with Speaker Johnson and President Biden to fund it. He let Big Pharma and his corrupt bureaucrats run roughshod over him as president. He promised to cut the deficit and ran up the biggest debt in history. He promised to run the government like a business and then close down our businesses. He promised to drain the swamp and then filled his administration with swamp creatures. He promised to protect our rights and then torpedoed the Constitution. Instead of lobbing poisonous bombs from the safety of his bunker, let's hear President Trump defend his record to me, mano a mano, a respective uh, wow. congenial debate. And I think this should, uh, once again, put to bed this ridiculous idea that was already has been ridiculous and should have already been put to bed, that his, he's only in this race to somehow hurt Biden, that he's actually trying to, trying to help Trump get elected. Like, I, you, you hear that kind of vibe expressed, I, th I think, from a lot of mainstream Democratic pundits. No, he is also running against President Trump. He has substantive criticism yeah, so let's, of let's what Trump Let's talk about some of these substantive yes. criticisms. Yeah. So I, I see no wars, uh, no lies detect detected on his point about the Ukraine war. I mean, sure. this is, it's so, I think it's useful to have RFK Jr. in this race if only for this reason. I have seen people on the left, I've seen people like Michael Tracy, be beating the gong uh, for over a week now about why aren't any conservative establishment media figures willing to critique Donald Trump from bear-hugging Mike Johnson as he betrays the MAGA base on this uh, foreign aid funding. RFK Jr., perhaps because he's not within the Republican sure. establishment, is willing to do it. He is absolutely right about Donald Trump running up the deficit with a tax cut that 80% of, what, 80 cents on every dollar of which, or some figure very close to that, went to the top 1% of Americans. And this has been a Democratic talking point for years that is 100% true. And the, res the, re the, the response from conservatives have been just to give up caring about uh, deficit spending. They just decided we're not going to be deficit hawks anymore because Donald Trump made it basically impossible for them to do. But is, the, is what the tastemakers in the Republican Party think about that the same as what the Republican base thinks about that. I mean, the base and is, is RFK Jr. the only one who's willing to carry yes. that banner consistently for the base? The, rebel, the Republican base, unfortunately, is, is very accustomed, I think, to betrayal on, uh, yeah, talk of runaway government spending and deficits, and then it doesn't matter, then the Republican administration comes in and spends even more than their predecessor, and it's, yeah, that 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 is a, not a new betrayal. But I absolutely agree with you, particularly on Ukraine spending, on FISA, on all of these things where Donald Trump could, right, could have, in theory, distinguished himself from, or even prevented, perhaps, the speaker from going down this That's direction, right. and absolutely did not. And the MAGA base, lesson. I agree with you, should be feeling, they, they were betrayed and should be feeling betrayed, and they do, in fact, have a vessel to channel that sense of betrayal in the person of RFK Jr., and then we did, so I think it's very smart for him to talk about And then about we didn't even things. get to the, the hitting Trump on his COVID policies. That's yeah. something that has really faded from the um, headlines of late. But remember, that is how RFK Jr. got a lot of kind of political capital over the course of the last few years is, again, being the bannerman for that issue. He said specifically he blamed Trump. Again, this has been framed as a Democrat yeah. versus Republican thing, but he blamed Trump for... Uh, uh, tr promising to run the government like a business and then closing down our businesses. It was a subtle, it's a subtle little COVID dig, but I don't know yeah. any other way to interpret that other than a, you are Donald Trump responsible for some of the shutdown policies and Trump that had become controversial. He is vulnerable on that with conservatives. I mean, that was the high watermark of Ron DeSantis's efforts when he was at a time when he was pulling somewhat within striking distance very early on before everybody else got in. And then all the legal matters facing Trump made the MAGA people really feel like they had to rally to Trump no matter 
what? Um, Trump was vulnerable on that front, so you could peel people away for a candidate who was speaking to those issues, and there is a candidate speaking to those issues. It's very, very interesting. We will continue to follow that. I have a radar up next.